Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Jesus, YouTube channel. Today, we got our another coaching video. I think this makes us our third coaching video. This music is so loud. Okay, I think that's better. All right, so we got GG Man here. If you guys don't know who GG Man is, this is Gulp. He is uh, M3 Terran, but likes to be in D1 most of the time. I don't know why. Um, and we got a TVP, TVP matchup, so... It's a bit of a long replay, I already saw. But let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let's see what GG man could do better. Okay, we got Rax gas, super normal. We're gonna breathe through this a little bit. Whoa, second gas. Okay, so we're going double gas. The SCV scout going. Got workers on the gas. Okay, check the main. All right. So we see a bit of flow on the uh, Nexus there. Probe Scout. We pop an eBay block. And we save the worker. Nice. Okay. So we save the worker, but there is a proxy gate. Now, this is actually really, 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 really unfortunate. Because when you look at the base here, Right, when you look here, it seems a little odd that they're not building probes, but it also seems odd that they haven't sent the probe to the natural yet. All right, because the the natural should be down by like 140 or so, and you should see a second pylon. So when you SCV scout like this, even if he sent this worker down, he would have taken longer than 140 to build the Nexus. Problem is, Gulp eBay blocks here, which means even if if there was an opportunity for him to realize that this was going to be fake, right? A fake now or a late natural, too late now. Now, granted, he's playing double gas, so it's a bit of a safer opener, so he's probably fine, right, for the most part. Um, should be able to still hold this, kind of just depending on what he built out of the factory and whatnot. Um, but regardless, this is a little bit tough here. So, we pop to eBay. No second pylon yet. A lot of times, Protosses will build a second pylon here. And then take the Nexus. So in this case... And really no reaction, right? No probes being pulled or anything like that. So when you build the eBay... When you build the eBay, and then you're kind of like maybe in the orange HP, like you're kind of like 10 seconds in or so. If you don't see like more probes coming down, if you don't see a second pylon getting put down, I would halt the eBay um, production a little bit sooner. And I would start scouting and seeing if you can maybe see if there's a second gas. I mean, sorry, yeah, second gas in the main, second pylon in the main. Um, are they chronoing the gateway unit? That kind of stuff. Uh, because I can tell you a lot, right? So unfortunately, this eBay block is a little bit of a meme. Now, granted, <clears throat> we're going to get a low ground bunker here pretty quickly. But the stalker will be here very fast. And there it is. At this point, though, everything's fine because he could just build a cyclone from the factory. So in the end, like... This is not really going to do that much damage. So it's kind of funny how it works out for kind of like for gulp in the end. Anyway, despite putting down the eBay block, not really getting a chance to see that it's the proxy gate. And then this coming out because you could just build a natural right there. And then with one cyclone and some of the Marines, he'll be OK. We built a widow mine. OK, I, so the widow mine, I'm not the biggest fan of. And let me tell you why. Uh, mostly for the zealot. So almost always there'd be a zealot. When the proxy gate hits, there should be a zealot. So there should be a stalker coming from the proxy gateway, and then a zealot coming from the main, followed by a second stalker from the main. So if you build a mine, it's really hard to juggle the micro. You're almost always going to be forced to have to detonate it on the zealot, because if not, the stalkers will kill the mine, right? Now, granted, if there is no zealot built, then you're guaranteed to kill one stalker. So, you know... What you could do is you could build the cyclone first, kill the zealot, and then follow it up with a widow mine, and then that widow mine, you know, can't won't be able, to, uh, Protoss won't be able to detonate that widow mine without sacrificing a stalker, which is what you want. So this this is a little bit rough. I would have built a cyclone, and I would have made sure to build an extra depot. So unfortunately, some uh, unfortunate responses here. Okay, well, it looks like they just lose the stalker to the mine anyway i guess but now we're supply blocks so that what we hold there and it looks like they are no longer pressing the matter so we're gonna get a little robo 
Robo transition is a little bit odd. I'm not gonna lie. So are we dead? Well, we're not entirely behind or we're not super behind, but it's definitely not ideal, right? Building a bunker, it's a bit of an overreaction, I think. As this just seemed to me like a standard proxy gate, so I would just play normal and I would go for the mine drop still. Now you could also do you could also do this, yeah, exactly. So you could also do this, and um, honestly, a lot of times people will, will transition into Robo first behind this. So I mean, at this level, at least. So, so we're gonna go two base Colossus. They're playing very defensively at home. Gulp's gonna start taking his natural, and we're gonna come in with this mind draw. Or sorry, this cyclone drop here. Kill a couple of workers. Boost away. Very nice. Very nice. And what do we scout? Well, we see the Robo Bay here. And this almost always suggests that the opponent went to Robo first transition, right? Because like six minutes in the game off a of proxy gate where you're building consistent stalkers from your gateways, like how can you afford Blink and Colossus and the Robo Bay and all the stalker production, right? It's kind of just like not really feasible. So it's safe to assume that by seeing this, that this is going to be a Robo, especially if you see all those stalkers coming at you there. So what do you do from here? Well, you know, Colossus up front are going to be tough to deal with. Now, granted, we do have a Raven, but we don't have Matrix. Um, the best thing you could really do is try to abuse multi-prong or drops as much as you can. So, for example, in this position, if I were Gulp, knowing that I, knowing if I were to see that there was a Robo first, and I knew I didn't have Matrix on the Raven, I would just actually just use the Raven to spam auto turrets on one side, and then use the Medivac to drop the other side, and I would fo force my opponent to split the Stalkers up, but also even warp in more Stalkers, right? And Protoss doesn't really want to warp in a lot of Stalkers because Stalkers tend to get worse later on. And at this level, I feel like Protoss players can't also use, like, um, how do I say, like, the most value out of those Stalkers, right? They can't really utilize it's their full potential. So they end up kind of losing them, or not maybe not maybe migrating them very well, which works out in the end for you anyway. Um... And, you know, when you start harassing and stuff like that, obviously they're going to build a battery and they're going to position their stalkers and stuff like that. But that's good because that, that, in a way that is damage, right? You're keeping the stalkers on their side of the map and then you're also forcing batteries or static defense. That's money spent on top of whatever you kill initially uh, by doing their harassment. So that's what I would do here, especially knowing that maybe you're not entirely in, in the perfect spot and you need to get damage done. That's what I would do. That's very smudge. And you can see all these stalkers are outside their base, but really they could be here, right? And you could be killing workers. Or for example, maybe they put the stalkers outside their base and then you come in with that Raven, you spam turrets here. They're going to be like, oh shit, I should have left my stalkers at home. Well, maybe I'm going to reactively warp in four more. Well, then now you're going to have 14 stalkers and no zealots, which is crazy, right? Because they're getting charged first. They want to be smashing out zealots, but if they got to keep building stalkers, it's not very good for them. All right, so we got 40 workers. We're trying to get to that. Oh, we're actually going for a third. Okay, I like that. And we're going to get some Marauders out. Concussive would be nice, and perhaps an Engineering Bay as well. Um, Toss is going to go for a double forge here. So that makes a lot of sense, right? A couple of Metavacs. We did see that Robo Bay, so hopefully we start cranking out some Vikings maybe after the four Metavacs. Now, what I like to do in this scenario is most of the time I feel like Pushing on two bases can be rough, especially when you're behind like this. So, for example, if you know if I'm if I've taken a lot of early game damage, in this case, Gulp does have a higher army supply, which could actually work out. Um, but in general, if I feel like I'm not really in a good spot in the game and I've lost a lot, I might just be more willing to keep the tanks at home and utilize the bio across the map. <clears throat> Here comes Zealous. That was actually nice engaging without the Colossus, and then that's a big missile. Obviously, Protoss is going to have defender advantage, or defender's advantage, so they're going to be able to warp in those reinforcements. And all these stalkers. So you can see here how, they actually, first of all, they actually forgot Blink, but even if they had Blink, it's I think it would still be, not be done yet. Or even like 30 seconds ago, 40 seconds ago, it wouldn't have been done yet. So then, you know, imagine a big drop like here with eight Marines, right? Something like that. Cause a lot of damage and get you back in the game. So we're landing our third now. We're going to build some more workers. Like I said, having some Vikings here would be good. Um, you know, despite everything, I do think Gulp has been macroing decently. And if you just had a couple of Vikings, 
that might make his pushers stronger in the next like two minutes, right? You want to be thinking about what you can do, what kind of timing you can hit two minutes from now, especially seeing that there is no fourth. For example, here, if I saw there was no fourth, honestly, I wouldn't feel pressured to attack Pro into Protoss, right? And even now, like, though with this push, imagine four Vikings or two more Vikings right now. Even if, you know, it's not enough to one shot or two shot the Colossus, you're poking at the Colossus while taking this fight, and you you force the Protoss to use the Stalkers to hit the Vikings rather than pressure your army. And you can see this guy, this guy's army, it's not very impressive. Like, for 10 minutes in the game, it's not great. And I think Golb is just, he doesn't have to force this fight at all. Not to say that it's not going well for him, because clearly it is, right? He did have a higher army supply, we saw that. So, because he's macroing well, so he has the mechanics for sure. Now, right, here we're going to pull back, and that's fine. Here, again, you got a good trade. Protoss has no fourth. You don't need to go crazy. You don't need to put yourself in a position where you're risking three or four medevacs worth of units. You don't have to do that. Yeah. If you want to and you want to try to end the game and like all that stuff, definitely like feel free to do that. I'll uh, just keep in mind though that you you know you do put yourself more at risk of losing the game. You know if you take a if you take a really bad trade or end up losing a lot of those units. But more classes coming out again. Just no Viking production, man. We need some Vikings. Even Ghost. We could have Ghost by now. Taking a fourth on location, I like that. And again, the only reason that this pressure is not able to win him the game, at least this right here from what I can tell, is going to be that he doesn't have those Vikings. He doesn't have something to hit those Colossus while kiting the Zealous, which is kind of what's happening here. Again, good trade. Like, good micro. He's got a good army. But again, those Colossus, man, they're just doing so much damage. Now, one thing you got to be careful about here, which sucks, and this is a big deal, is that even if you're kiting the Zealots, right, depending on how you're kiting, you might just be eating more Colossus shots to your army. So if you bunch up all your units like this, like that was good right here. This is good. But back here, when you're trying to kite these Stalkers afterwards, you see how these Colossus are just laying it down on him, right? Like... His units are bunched up. They're kind of low on HP. He's been stimmed a little bit. He's trying to kite those stalkers uh, at the end there. And he just soaks up those Colossus shots. Again, they're maybe, they may not be killing the units, like taking the kills, but they're definitely doing a lot of damage. So got to be really careful about that, man. A little bit. I feel like my camera angle shifted. Okay. So Vikings are coming out now. I think we're realizing the smudge here. I'd like to see a few more workers. I think with a few more workers, you got a bit more money. Like 10 more workers and you can go up to liberators with liberator range you really want to be thinking ahead there okay so like on four bases you definitely can get liberators out good one of mine drop even if it doesn't kill a lot of probes it's still good damage we catch some of these units very nice storm again we could already we could have already had a few ghosts so so no 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 sleep man AK no AK GG man aka gulp you just want to be thinking more about like transitioning, getting faster Vikings, faster ghosts, and don't underestimate how good your macro is. Like you clearly see here that despite all the damage you took at the beginning and like pulling the SDVs to fight the proxy and all this stuff, you still had a lot of stuff, man. You still had a good army. And like if you just add a couple of these little pieces to the puzzle there, you end up probably just winning that game just straight up from being better. But we as Terrans we tend to get smudged on pretty hard by the whole Protoss thing, which you know, I understand. Definitely understand. I like, I like how active you've been on the map as well. I think a lot of people should can take notes on this. It's, it's how active he's been. Like, he maxes out. He gets a good army. And then he pressures on the map. Tries to get trades. Takes down the base and stuff like that. You know, that's good. Like, here again. Killing the base is good. Um, Just ran out of ghost there for the EMPs on the High Templar. No problem. Just reset. And then, you know, go at it again. Um, definitely like to see a second starport with a second uh, reactor, right? I think if we have that, we can crank out some Vikings, hit these Colossus. Kind of been the highlight of, of this game, I feel like. Not a bad fight here. Again, we see you taking this base. The problem is like off one starport, it just takes so long, right? So you're kind of like, you want to think about it like you're losing a little bit of time because off one starport, it takes so long to build them. But if you have two, you crank out eight really quickly and you're able to pressure right away. But with two, 
you know, two at a time, by the time you get a sizable amount of Vikings, you might have given the Protoss enough time to pivot their army or build up that Colossus count more. So then you just end up needing more Vikings anyway, right? Especially if you're trying to catch up. It's important to have that second star for it. It really allows you to catch up. Um, that's kind of what's missing here. We're fucking stimmed our ass off. And again, just nothing to hit these these chonky boys or the splash damage. Now, Seven Ghosts on the way. Really good job for noticing that you needed that. Um, honestly, that's something that I feel like a lot of people actually overlook. So I really appreciate seeing that there. And like I said, really just need that second star port, man. If you look at the trades here, very close, very, very close. And you're just missing a little piece of the puzzle there. Uh, at this point now, what can you do? What else can you do? Well, besides adding more command centers, you know, expand some sensor towers, uh, more production, of course. Like, don't be afraid to go three star poor, more barracks and stuff like that. You see how you built like seven plus ghosts, right? If with extra barracks, you could build those seven ghosts at a time and then still have like three marauders building or four marauders building. Um, that way, you're also not building like seven marauders or seven ghosts right you have like seven marauders and like four ghosts or seven ghosts and four marauders something like that so make sure that you continuously add those barracks good now we recognize that we need some of those extra vikings some of the extra star port units the problem with the problem now is you know protoss is starting to transition to more stargate units they're kind of restabilizing or stabilizing the economy right they're taking another base um not that we haven't they were also taking other bases but the probe count is significantly higher, so unless we start ramping up our SCV count or building some more orbitals, they're going to feel it a bit. Big storm there, and again, we're just missing the air units, man. Nothing to hit these giraffes. Good concave there. The zealots in the back pinching you hurts, but, you know, ideally, because there's only two stalkers, besides these ones being warped in, you pick up, you boost away, you can leave the Vikings. Vikings hit, like, Two of these Colossus, maybe kill them, and then you end up killing some of these. But yeah, these guys are just lasting way too long, man. Wish I had that problem. Cancel this base. And then now, unfortunately, just because you've been running on that really low worker count, you kind of just ran out of money, right? Ran out of money, and then that trade was enough to kind of shift it to their, to their, resor to their resource loss advantage, and then... Now we're kind of seeing what casters say. The beginning of the end, guys. I think it's the beginning of the end, you know. Uh, coming to terms with the losses, whatever bullshit they say. <laughs> so moral of the story, guys, from this replay. Build some goddamn Vikings, all right? Build some Vikings and always ask yourself, when you're taking these fights, if you feel like the fight is really close or, you know, you take a fight and there's only one or two Colossus left, really ask yourself, like, what was missing from my army, right? Um, I get it if you're no sleep man. It's a little bit rough to think about that kind of stuff. Uh, but maybe for the others who have uh, working brains during the day uh, because they are sleeping. Uh, think about that, you know. Think about like, man, if I would have had two more Vikings, four more Vikings, you know, maybe I could have won that fight. What could, I, what could I have done? What could I have adjusted to um, do that? Because honestly, the micro wasn't even that bad at all. Like, granted, sure, there was maybe a few moments where the army was really bunched up. Uh, but definitely not the only reason he lost, right? Definitely could have killed... Um, those Colossus definitely had supply advantages at multiple points in the game, stuff like that. So um, that's it for this game, guys. Clearly, the man is dead, and we do not want to keep watching him die for the next four minutes, I believe. Yep. Oh, two minutes, actually. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys found it informative. I do really need more submissions, guys. So please, if you made it to the end and you want me to watch your video or watch your replay to get onto the coaching videos um, every week, please fill out that form below because, honestly, I'm out. I got nobody left. So if you want to get your shit watched and you want it done quickly, now is the time. Take advantage. Because maybe if I become YouTube famous in like two more weeks, like Mark, not going to happen, you know? All right, boys. Thanks for watching my... I almost said thanks for watching my stream. Thanks for watching my video, guys. And as always, leave a comment, like, uh, sub, because um, I don't say that enough. And uh, I'll stop yapping now. I'll see you guys later.